from the Mike James Rock Show. Hi there. Um, Jace Lewis is joining us, or we've joined him on the back of the tour bus. It's been quite a while. We were trying to work out when the last time we actually had a, a proper conversation on, on film or tape or something. And it must have been about five or six years ago when you were at Sonosphere. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think it was uh, Sonosphere 2014. Yes, I think mm. it was. Mm. A lot has changed for you since then, man. We've, we're obviously avid fans and been playing all your tracks on various guises, but yeah. the last year or so is really kind of like that for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of... Um, I, I went back to to my solo name yeah. um, because I think we... It was pro, pro field, was on the pro field, yeah, yeah. yeah, which was a, um, a bit of a, <clears throat> you know, a mistake, really. Should not have um, should not have really have gone down that route of being molded into being a band name uh and the fans that you know i'd gathered um along the way when i was a solo artist uh kind of didn't really swallow it very well so i actually oh, lost actually. fans as well you know they were just a bit sort of like what the hell's going on you know they were after my you know they they loved the fact it was a solo artist that played all the instruments and all of yeah. that so and they weren't you know they weren't dumb they could see that you know they still know it was me writing everything but uh since i've gone back to being back under my name all the doors are opened again. It's crazy. Yeah. So much to like talk about. Working with Burton Seabell, how did that come about? Oh, God. Uh, well, me and Burton, um, Burton got in touch with me on MySpace Whoa. years ago. Yeah. Long time friend. Then. Um, uh, sort of admiring my work. I didn't know that it was Burton because it was from oh, okay. the project Essential of the Watchers, mm -hmm. which, I, which I'd never heard of before. And uh, so he'd messaged me and... Um, and I, did, I ignored the first two messages, I think, because at that time I was getting bombarded. Yeah, of course. Because um, a lot of stuff was kicking out in the East for me at that time. And and then he messaged me again, and it was like, oh, check out my music, you know, I'm a big Star Wars fan, you know. So I checked out the music, I instantly recognised the voice, and then I scrolled down to see the names, and it was Burton. So I just immediately wrote back, and then we just kept in touch. And, I mean, now we're... We're like, we're re very close. Like he comes over and, and stays with you at the yeah, studio and stuff, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he's coming over in um, in January, okay. uh, and he's staying with me for six weeks. So we're actually going to be recording the full album of Essential the Watchers, which I'm now drumming for. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm seeing him in a few weeks. Actually, I'm flying out to New Orleans because he's getting married nice. to a wonderful woman called Sherry. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad he's uh, you know he's. he's found some love and oh totally he's yeah. getting there and oh they're around. That's two cool. peas in a pod then pair so <laughs> nice people um you touched <clears> on it just now the the, the the link to the star wars thing uh, mm. so we, there's, we've got to talk about the green cross code man really haven't we yeah dave browse how, how did that come about there's so many artists that you've been <laughs> working with in the last couple of years it's just, but that's that's one that's kind of left field and well out there so. yeah well me and dave have been f friends for 18 plus years now Okay. Um, 18 plus years, so, um, and we're like family, pretty much. Um, and uh, he was my manager for a while, years ago. <laughs> that is So insane. he managed my music, um, more on the financial and just the business element of okay. things. Um, and, uh, and yeah, he's just been, a, you know, a, a great patron of my music, and he's, you know, pushed me for years, and I've been all around the world with him. Um, I've met everyone from star wars you know carrie fisher mark Hamill. oh amazing yeah i mean it's uh it's been a surreal existence um you know being friends with somebody like like that because he's darth vader as well yeah um so. but no one would know he's darth vader because he's, he's got the the kit on on the in the film that's right yeah like, yeah i'm old enough to actually remember when he was the green cross code man and yeah he used to play his yeah. videos in schools like this is how you cross the road you <laughs> hold a really tall guy's hand and like yeah. both ways and stuff it was like it's just a well, he surreal. says he says that's the most enjoyable career he's ever had has been the Green Cross Code man. He did it for fourteen years. Wow! So uh, and he used to go around all the schools, and they would all, uh, you know, he would he'd ask them if they had any questions, and there was not one question about the Green Cross Code man. It was <laughs> always about Darth Vader. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's it's an amazing man with an amazing life, and he's eighty three years old now. So you know, he's still there. And that's he's cool. That's, he's still going out and yeah. kicking it and stuff. Yeah, like that. that's awesome. I suppose once you've uh, travelled the whole galaxy and solar system, you just... well, you know, when you build a moon, <laughs> you know what, what else left is there to do? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Support yeah. Jason tour. Why not? Well, there is that. Yeah. There is um, that. There's a, a band that's really hot at the moment. 
Queen. <laughs> yeah. How did that come about with your collaboration working with Brian May? Through working with Roger. Cause okay. Because Roger was on Wrath. Yeah. Which you guys play a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Roger Taylor's on that track, uh, drumming on it. And um, so um, there's a chap called Josh McRae. Right. Um, who was in a uh, the band Cr The Cross with Roger years ago. Right, okay. And he now works with Roger. He, he produces a lot for Queen and all of that. And uh, he's a good friend of mine. And, um, and he, yeah, he just opened the door into the, the world of Queen. And, uh, you know, he wanted to get Rufus in the band with me as a drummer. That didn't happen. Um, but instead we had Roger um, to do the drums on that. And then my next kind of thing was like I wonder if Brian would be up for yeah up for doing something and uh, and he was and he loved it and I speak to Brian all the time now I'm always chatting to Brian and I uh, spoke to him on the night of watching the movie Bohemian Rhapsody such a good film it's incredible yeah absolutely incredible it's one of those films where I come out of the cinema and sort of like just gonna go and join the back of the queue again. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I want to wow. watch it again. Yeah, yeah just, just to see the bits that you didn't see the first time around. That's it's, exactly it's, right. I mean, it's just pure, Queen has always been about that magic, the mm. magical act, and they've captured that in that film. And uh, you know, I congratulated Brian on it, and um, and he was just so chuffed. He said that they've had some mixed reviews. Oh, really? Yeah, about it. But um, he did say, you know, it's it's a uh, it's not a documentary about Freddie Mercury it's a movie yeah about Queen so people got to remember that. We, we, we went and saw it together me and Dan here and uh, we came out afterwards thinking like there's there's definitely scope that they could do a second part from Live Aid oh, to, totally. to the death because there's so many hits that just yeah wasn't portrayed in the film because it was too early uh, uh, absolutely so many things they did after Live Aid that really that's kind right. of took absolutely them even right. further out yeah I mean there, there, yeah you're right there's another chapter after that which is the yeah. sad decline of Freddie and how they dealt with it, which yeah, yeah. is just as poignant subject as, as its success, you know. Very much so, and it is it's still drawing awareness to the whole AIDS battle that's going on at the I moment agree. as well. Oh, I is, totally agree, yeah. It's needed, you know, there are still people out there that don't even know, you know, to use a condom, things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, forbidden it's, to use one, actually. It's, it's crazy nowadays. <laughs> In some countries, yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that kind of almost leads us on to the, the next person that you've worked with, is, uh, Professor Dawkins. Richard Dawkins, yeah. yeah. The, again, when I saw that on your social media, I was like, hang about, that's another yeah, know. left field uh, yeah. person to collaborate well, with. Well, it's just basically, it's, it's it, I don't know, it's kind of like the law of attraction. It's very strange, <laughs> but the, all of these people have all had big influences on me. Oh, right. Uh, Queen, huge influence. Yeah. Fear Factory, big influence. Those two bands there, we can start and end that right there. You know, Fair those, enough. those yeah. two big bands um, have had a lot. And, and I've worked with you know I've worked with them all and I'm friends with them and um, and it's a very it's a big accomplishment and so the funny thing is is that going to pick up? No, that's fine. Probably, no? but it's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, um, yeah. The, the 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 funny thing is is that um, is that um, Dawkins is somebody that I've been following for a long time. Uh, and I love his work, and I love um, everything about uh, about what he does, and his plight for rational thought and mm. logic, and all of that. Um, so I got speaking to his uh, assistant, Rand. Um, it, it actually took me a while. It took me like a, a year or two to actually okay. get it locked in, you know. And um, and ultimately, they want to be able to trust you, you know. So yeah. you know, they could see that I was an artist. You know, I was doing shows all around the world and whatever and they could see that I was an active um, you know my plight within my music mm. is not far sim dissimilar from what Richard does and they could see that and they respected it and so the more that built up you could build a rapport and a friendship and then and then the next minute I'm invited to his house wow. I mean his home yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't think I was going to his home you know to record him and I turned up and there we were and yeah it was an incredible experience absolutely incredible did you capture everything from it like that or was it literally just a recording um well we had a, we had a good chat yeah um you know me and richard had a good talk and and um yeah it was it was a a really really kind of i don't know it was just it was surreal actually because he's, he's such a you can just tell his mind is just uh thinking constantly 
so he was speaking to me and it was it just goes over your head kind yeah, of. yeah 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 and and it was just it was just amazing such an amazing experience and such an amazing man i mean you know we've just lost stephen hawking and mm. i felt like i was sat in a room with you know a person that's equal to that oh almost, very much you know so I mean? yeah yeah he's, he's in the in the world of science and definitely considered up there isn't he it's oh like god one yeah of the, one of the uh ones that we remembered for hundreds oh, of years oh absolutely on, think, yeah. absolutely and he likes the music you know he, he i played him he's on the song exhale yeah um and yeah he's uh yeah he's just very much kind of really into it he doesn't eat he's only ever done something with nightwish that was the other band that he oh right okay he did something yeah. with them um and you know he was like oh i'm not so sure i want to get doing something else just with another musician mm -hmm. i've already done it once but he listened to my music and rand encouraged him and and, and it, it was very easy uh, and i'll be seeing them again you know i mean i speak to them regularly that's cool you know um so yeah, it's, it's great. I want to get him hooked up with Brian May? I reckon that's, that's a well. They know party. each other. Oh, they do already. They do I, I know each they other. Done they're well, I mean, both by kind of by like complete that. coincidence, I ended up work, having two professors on my one album, yeah. <laughs> which I didn't because I released it in two parts: part one, million part one, and million part two. But on the vinyl, um, it's all the album. Yeah. And I look at the back, and it's like, oh god, you know, Professor Brian May and Professor Richard Dawkins is. That's cool. And Darth Vader. And Darth Vader, yeah. <laughs> and Bernsey Bell as well. They're all. Who's next then? What's 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 next for for your your quest into music? Then? Me and Benji have been speaking like oh. Skindred, but we've been on about that for a long time anyway. Um, but um, yeah, we've you know we've been watching each other's shows, and uh, I'm actually going to be doing warning with them tonight. Oh, superb! Which they've been trying to get me to do for the last two shows, and I've just been. I don't really. Uh, Get up on stage doing things with other bands is not a big thing for me. It took Fear Factory four years to get me up, <laughs> and I would I just kept declining, and then Burton just if just you don't sprung do it, I'm not it on me. Record with you, <laughs> and I know I was regretting it as well after the show. I was like, oh damn! I wish I went up there and did yeah. something with them. And uh, so I've 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 had to sort of think about no, let's let's not do it. I'm going to regret it. So get up. Well, there. and the the crowd here in Exeter. Are ravenous for that tune it's, oh, really? it's a local anthem obviously Aria's from Exeter anyway so we've that's got right that yeah he is yeah but there's like the local club nights wherever they play it even like in, in the pubs in town they play yeah. warning and there are hairy guys with their tops the off helico the, yeah the helicopter the new, comes out in, in a helicopter. pub full of like you know everyone and all of a sudden there's some burly guys going <laughs> you know the mad thing is it's like you know because I've known these boys for a long time yeah for 20 years I remember them when they were well when Benji was in Dub War he'd be playing, right, okay. playing here with the Manic Street Preachers wow Really? Up at the Great Hall, just opposite, opposite here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, and and it's like Benji in my eyes is one of the. I mean, he's the real deal. You know, he's the real deal. Oh yeah. He is uh, a legend, a living legend. You know. And, it's uh, not front men like him at the moment. No. They're, you know, they're amazing front men. Don't get me wrong. <clears> but <throat> yeah. The way that Benji could control a crowd of fifty people or, or crowds of like half a million. I agree. People, I so agree. Like, it will tell someone to shut up. And the only other person yeah. kind of that sin do that really is Fred Durst. Like have a go at the crowd. I, I see. But in a jovial yeah. kind of. Yeah. It's like hearted. I'm having a go at you. You're yeah. For, you're absolutely phone, right so. about Fred Durst. He is another. You know, insanely amazing front man. Yeah, they can control the crowd. Of course, like they can. And, and your music with Benji on, or vice versa, would be amazing. I think. That's yeah, a, a yeah. Well, I mean, happen. we've been finding on this tour that, that our music's just worked so well. I mean, they, you know, they've. I, I forget which one of them said about it because we were we had a few drinks last night, <laughs> uh, and um, and they were saying because they've got, they've got different support bands. Yeah for different parts of the UK. I think it's a really good way of doing it as well. Yeah, like I you think do it's three great. or four dates and yeah. It's but cool. um they uh but they they've been saying that you know they the support bank goes on it's been not sparse but it's just been kind of like level level sort of vibed or whatever. Yeah. But we've been going on and it has been bouncing. This is what we want. We did Guildford and then that was insane and then we did Bournemouth and that was even more insane. Yeah, so you're finishing the weekend off here, man. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Place is going to bounce. Oh, I'm looking for. I've never done Exeter before, so I'm no. looking forward to it. Well, we we tried to get you here before, but it just oh, really? hasn't happened. Yeah, oh. yeah. I think that was quite a while ago when it was uh, when you were in your old band. I think oh, we, right, we had okay. a we had a, a try it and it just didn't work out. At the oh, time, that's a shame. 
you you I think you'll want, once you've once you play there you'll want to come back again and again. Oh, totally. Yeah. It's one of those little secrets that exit is like just that little bit out of the way. But when people come down here, everyone turns. It's up a and, party. Yeah, it is. You know, it's like that. It's um, it is like that up north as well. You know, Scott. I love. You know, I love Scotland, for yeah. instance. Um, love doing shows up there. Nottingham, Rock City. Love doing that place. It's, it is great. I so love that's it. That's the, na- the nation's favourite uh, venue, by all accounts, as well. Yeah. City, which is cool. Is it really? That's, uh, so it's been voted a few times, yeah. Well, there you go. It, that's a legendary place. Um, what's next recording-wise for you, then? Are you, are you thinking about recording? I know you've, uh, you've literally just dropped the medium. Yeah, part two. well, I've, I'm already four songs in. Okay. I'm four songs in on the new album. Um, and, uh, yeah, four, four songs in. Um and it looks as though me and Gary Newman are going to be doing another song together. Amazing. Um, you just put out all these legends. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Who's, who's left for you to work with? Who would you Who would you ideally like to work with that you haven't done already? Connected I've done with? it all. <laughs> Freddie Mercury, you know. Well, um, there is the possibility of performing live with him now. <laughs> it's a hologram. Yeah. I may, maybe Corey Taylor. I, I mean, that would be pretty good. That would be... Yeah, I could um, see that working I could see well. that, yeah. that being pretty... Uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, Ryan Mayorga from Stone Sour is actually on the song that I'm doing with Gary. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I've done it, but we, Roy and myself, recorded that a while ago. It's only now I'm getting round to actually finishing it off. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't think there's anybody left. I don't know. We'll just see who comes out. Le- you know, there's, there's bound to be someone that comes out left field and goes. Yeah, I'm interested in what I you would do, like vice versa. To, I, I know this sounds a bit strange. I'd like to either work with Rihanna or Lady Gaga. Oh. I'd like to do something with them. I think Gaga would be a good call, because she's, she's quite into her, her, yeah. her rock and her metal side. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's like the fifth member of Metallica now, isn't she? Or something? <laughs> Apparently so. For, for the next recording next year, they've oh. both come out and said they're going to work together. Let's hopefully they'll get the, all the microphones working better than they did at the uh, Grammys. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, how can <laughs> oh somebody had a bad day that day? Yes. <laughs> um, it, as always, it's a pleasure catching up with you. I feel we could sit here and just natter non-stop until you're on stage, but uh, I'll, I'll let you go and do whatever you do before you uh, get on stage. It's been man. a pleasure. I appreciate yeah, it, it man. And we are ha- more than happy to carry on, carry like bashing out the tunes because they are. Like, I really appreciate it. You know, awesome, it's. Uh, I mean, as we know, Scuzz is, is now is come to yeah, the end. Unfortunately, so. Um, and uh, it's a real. You know, it's a real tragic loss, really, for the business. So I, I know it's difficult. It's difficult for us all, but yeah, we're all, you know, we're all self-funded and sort of yeah, supporting doing, the I cause, think. doing the same thing. That's it. Our, our, our motto at the moment is just trying to like push as much new music into people's ears, yeah, to as great a field as possible. So yeah. you know, we're pos- constantly pushing our YouTube and our stations and listening again and stuff just to get that new music out there. And you've been on the show pretty much every week no, for the know, last couple I, of months now. It's, I cannot. Which is great. Many a beer will be heading your way (laughs) (laughs) I think we'll leave it at that and go to the bar cheers everyone Uh, thanks for watching uh, my interview with Jason Lewis here it was absolutely amazing Uh, if you liked that we've got hundreds of other interviews so do the uh, (laughs) subscribe the like and the notification bell thing and uh, stay tuned to the Mike James Rock show on YouTube thanks oh yeah James Rock Show. You are watching the Mike James Rock Show.